Hello everyone, it's Tristan with another video. And also don't forget to check out Mickey's video I will be posting tonight. And we wrapped up the book of Ezra, and we're going to be reading some of the words of Jesus, some of the red letters. And we're going to start off in verse 11 of chapter 8 in Mark, because some of the verses before it had to do with Jesus feeding the, the multitude through through the miracle with the with the uh, the loaves of bread and we'll be uh, looking at some teaching and how people perceived it and the desire that's on people's heart and what Jesus desires for us which is heavenly things man tends to worry about earthly things more so than heavenly things at times and Jesus doesn't Jesus wants us to be more focused on the spiritual matters. Because we are in this world, but not of this world, of course. It says in verse 11, The Pharisees came and began to argue with him, seeking from him a sign from heaven to test him. I don't know about you, but I, I wouldn't really advise arguing with Jesus, because... As we see here, it says that he sighed deeply. And I love how in the book of Mark, it really emphasizes the uh, the human nature of Jesus. Because that's kind of a human thing to do, is to sigh deeply when you're, in, when you're uh, disappointed, of course. It says, and this word sighed, with the ED at the end, in the King James Bible, it's used only three times. One, I think, in Exodus or somewhere around there. The other two times is here in Mark. Of course, two different definitions in Mark for the word, but side is a very, uh, a very rare term, and and here it is right here, and it really, in my opinion, describes how Jesus feels here. It says, and it really sets the scene for it too. It says, and he sighed deeply in his spirit and said, Why does this generation seek a sign? Truly I say to you, no sign will be given to this generation. And that's pretty. That's a pretty deep subject right there, saying no sign will be given to this generation. Of, but what I'm going to focus on is the fact that, see, Jesus wanted us to be focused on spiritual matters instead of, Seeking a sign, he just wants us to ha have faith and believe, and to be, to live righteously. Because he did say at one time that um, we are supposed to be perfect, just like his Father in heaven is perfect. And uh, it that's confusing too, because we we all fall short. But we are to pick up our cross daily and walk with Jesus, and die to the flesh daily, and all those other things, and to strive to be perfect like him so that we may gain eternal life one day and we see the next verse it says and he left them got into the boat again and went to the other side <clears throat> now they had forgotten to bring bread they had only one loaf with them in the boat and he cautioned and he cautioned them saying Watch out, beware of, of the leaven, leaven of the Pharisees and the leaven of Herod. And in my understanding, this is probably like referring to like the spread of sin. Like, because there was the, uh, I don't know if it was an offering, but in the Old Testament, it was about the, uh, the unleavened bread. Uh, and <clears throat> I think that was a sacrifice, which I don't know a whole lot about that, that subject there, but... It is really interesting how he says this, and just to be aware of it, it says, be aware of the spread of sin, because in, if I think about, like, leaven, it, it lets the bread rise, and it always makes me think of, of the spread of sin, and we have to be, we have to be careful of that, and I, I see that in today's age, you know, it seems like every day you see the, the, sp the spread of sin, and people that rebel, people that follow the false idols. And we have to, it says, Jesus says, beware of that. And he wants us to have faith alone. 
He sighed deeply because they saw a sign. And we have to just have faith alone and beware of the spread of sin. Is how I'm going to put it in my opinion is the, the spread of sin. It says, And they began discussing with one another the fact that they had no bread. See, Jesus just gave a teaching. And then they have the audacity to just just forget about that and just continue discussing how there was no bread. And Jesus, aware of this, said to them, Why are you discussing the fact that you have no bread? Do you not yet perceive or understand? Are your hearts hardened? Having eyes do you not see, and having ears do you not hear? And do you not remember? When I broke the five loaves for the five thousand, how many baskets full of broken pieces did you take up? They said to him, Twelve. And the seven for the four thousand, how many baskets full of broken pieces did you take up? And they said to him, Seven. And before it was twelve for the other the other uh, miracle that, that took place. And this one was seven, and it says, And he said to them, Do you not yet understand? Because it sounds to me like they they kept asking for for worldly matters and Jesus was providing for him. Do you do you not understand what I'm trying to do for you? And I'm providing for you, so you need to focus on spiritual matters is is how I'm perceiving this. Because here I don't see any context to where they acknowledge the fact that he said, Beware of the Laban of Fer of the Pharisees and of Herod. And that's a very serious statement and uh very interesting very interesting subject there. And just the, the red letters in there, in those two spots, it, it's just, it's beautiful the way he puts it. And he speaks with so much authority and power and is so focused on the spiritual matters. He provides the miracles so that they can just focus on what needs to be focused on. What needs to be focused on is living righteously so that we can please God. And so that God can comfort us and we can we can have godly pleasure that is not sinful and and it's all through just faith in God. And I don't want Jesus to sigh deeply. And I, I just say that as like a uh, not wanting to keep questioning if Jesus is real because I know he is real and I know that he is the way to the Father, and it's through Christ that we are saved. And, of course, like I like we read before, watching out for the spread of sin, or just sin in general, and to not fall for that. And like my Uncle Mickey says, that the Bible wears out many hammers, and that is a fact. And through the spread of sin, the Bible's still here. The background's a little bit different because the, the mic cut out on me. and But we're back. And I was trying to say that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And the devil tried to, tried to stop me with this video, but I was well pleased with it. And it went really well. And it was just two more minutes that, that where the mic cut out. And so I'm just going to wrap it up like I was doing. And... We we got through the book of we got through the book of Ezra and Zephaniah, and it was a really good moment for the channel and for for us. And I learned a lot through it about God and his and his mercy, and also how he his wrath can come down through his anger. But what is still in my head is when we read in Ezra that God punished us less than our iniquities deserved, and and also how in Zephaniah, I still remember how it says that the unjust knows no shame. And it's amazing how when studying a book like that, there's verses that really stick and really get in your head. And of course, the takeaway here is 
and I'm trying to recall what I've already said, the takeaway here is that we have to focus on spiritual matters, quit questioning all the time about the faith and just have the faith, or stop stop seeking a sign is what I meant to say, yeah, stop seeking a sign and just have the faith alone, and also beware of the spread of sin, and those are amazing things to to meditate on, and Jesus, again, spoke with lots of authority, and it was a blessing being able to study God's word with everybody, and these red letters of Christ, and we'll be studying more about Jesus and how he fulfilled the law next week. And I hope everybody has a blessed night. And thanks everyone for watching.